Yo, what's going on guys, boy Ethan? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another video on the channel and we are out here at the driving range. Just got out of work on a nice little Monday afternoon. Uh, some random place here in West, in Central Mass, actually in Southborough, Massachusetts. Um, Googled the closest driving range I can find and we just hopped in. So this is kind of what, oh God, I'm falling. This is what the side of the place looks like. Looks pretty interesting. Um, we're gonna hit some balls. I'm feeling super antsy. I just wanna do something. Haven't, I feel like I haven't done any physical activities in a while. So we're gonna film ourselves hitting some balls with some pretty bad form, but um, just gonna hit some balls before I go off to Encore, get a session in. Um, I just feel like I have all this energy pent up inside me. And instead of going to the gym, we're gonna swing the golf club and uh, there's something just very therapeutic about hitting balls and just swinging stuff and just having some aggression. I don't know, it's weird. But um, let's just uh, do that. Hopefully you enjoy the golf montage. But before we get into the golf montage, quick little thing, sweatshirts, t-shirts. I've been harping you guys about it all week and uh, there's one week left for, the, for this to be open. So uh, doing a quick little promo. Two people, I'm giving away two um, tournament buy-ins of my PP Poker app, so if you're interested, uh, filling in here because I really hated that take and I stopped the filming. So to clarify, I'm giving away two free poker tournament um, passes on the PP Poker, the club that I'm working with. If you do purchase one of these hoodies, purchase a t-shirt, if you get an order in, I'm getting a list of um, people who did purchase and I'm gonna throw you guys in the list. I'm gonna pick two random people and two of those people will get a free entry to a tournament on the poker app. So absolutely no risk, a little bit of incentive, also just kind of giving back as a token of appreciation for everyone who did purchase something already but if you haven't go get one um, get a t-shirt it's 19 bucks and you could possibly win an entry to a free tournament um, tournaments range from like ten dollars twenty dollars forty dollar buy-ins um, probably goes to the, like the middle one like 20 bucks so um, maybe bank the tournament as well win something who knows maybe it can really work really well for you guys but anyways just want to cross over the two things that I'm working on the merch and also my um, PP poker club so if you want more information on that club just shoot me an email at at orampage at gmail.com or shoot me a message on telegram all the information is down in the description below but wanted to merge them in there let you guys know about the opportunity and also onto the golf montage I'll be honest with you, that uh, that, that little, little golfing driving range session did not go well at all. Hopefully, things go a little bit better. We just drove through Boston traffic, and um, yeah, let's just hope our poker session goes a whole lot better than that driving range session, because that was, that was bad. Um, I came out with a bunch of cuts. I always hurt my fingers somehow, um, and I always start like bleeding like random places whenever I swing a golf club, so there's something wrong with my swing for sure if I keep hurting myself. But, um, like I said, let's just hope poker goes a little bit better because last day of September, September 30th, one more day to claw out of this hole. Probably not gonna happen, but let's just see if we can make up a little bit of damage that we caused ourselves and go into October hot. So let's get into some hands, let's get into the action. Let's go. We hop into the 1-3 at Encore and we buy in for the max, obviously, for $300. The first interesting spot we get involved in, we have pocket 10 in the big blind. It's the very first hand, so um, pretty nice to start off with a pretty good hand, first hand here. So there's four limpers to me and four limpers playing five-handed or five-weighed. We're not going to go to flop that many people. I'm going to raise it up to $25, and we only get one caller here in middle position, so... 
Not really sure what that limp calling a $25 bet hand could be, but um, we're gonna go to a flop, which is queen nine, three, two spades out there. Not really the best board, obviously with an overcard, but uh, here out of position, I'm gonna throw out a half blocker, half value bet of $20. Pocket 10s, pretty decent hand. I could be ahead here half of the time, honestly, just kind of a blocker bet. Um, and he makes the call for $20, so uh, we're going to go heads up to a turn, and we improve somehow. It's the 10 of clubs, so we do turn a set now, and I am going to bet $40. I think I can get called by queens all the time, and uh, just trying to get value here, obviously, when we have a miracle turn card. He thinks for a little bit and ends up folding face up. He shows... Queen, deuce of diamonds, and folds, top pair. I don't know what's going on, honestly. Um, one, if you're going to play queen, deuce, you're going to have to call down all three streets. If you do flop, top pair, I don't know what else you're calling. You're playing queen, deuce with, but I, I can't even make this up. It's queen, deuce. Like, what's happening? Following hand after that, we're on a brand new table, and we uh, have king, jack, offsuit in middle position here, and I decide to open it up to $15. And we get four callers around, so out of position this spot, five ways with a very marginal hand, unfortunately. Um, flop comes, four, seven, eight, two spades out there. Uh, definitely not going to hit my range ever. Going to hit someone's range all the time, so when action checks to me, I'm going to check here. Just, just really, really not over really over with this hand already but uh action actually ends up checking all the way around so we do see a free turn the turn is the king of diamonds so really great card because we end up turning top pair so um here top pair action checks to me again i'm gonna bet for value i can target weaker kings and uh some other hands and draws as well that might be around so i bet 40 dollars, and we end up actually getting two callers two participants in this hand so uh, the player to my left and the button so we're gonna go out of position to a river which is the three of hearts a lot of things break out and uh, still a top pair. It's very marginal in this spot because there's a lot of two pair combos out there. And I guess you could say, I guess you could say five, six already flopped it. But um, with top pair, multi way, it's a better check spot here. I think out of position, especially I ended up th firing a very, very tiny value bet. I go for thin value. It's a $25 bet. I can get called by almost anything here. The player to my left, though, actually ends up jamming for 141 total. The button looks pretty miserable and ends up folding. And now action's onto me. Uh, the $25 bet, I think I just snap fold to any raise here. But uh, he seemed like a confident player where he has some bluffs in his range. But really, there are no bluffs here. Um, so I make the pretty easy fold. He ends up showing king-queen, though, for a really, really thin value. Um, so... I mean, that was a pretty good jam by him. Shout out to him for doing making that jam, but uh, with just one pair jamming your stack is pretty interesting. He did outkick me. I did make the right fold, but that was a pretty interesting spot. Falling hand after that, we have pocket fives in the cutoff, and an early position player opens it up to $15. I decide to make the call here, obviously, with a pocket pair, and the small blind ends up jamming for $46 total. Really short stacked. He uh, He's just jamming. I've seen him jam super, super light, aka he jammed king eight offsuit for like $60 preflop one time and won, so uh, I know he has a pretty uncapped range. I am definitely planning on calling the 45, obviously, but when the early position player calls this, um, sometimes I can shut down, but early position player has me covered, and I would love to get a lot of value here. So uh, once he calls, it's only $30 more, $31 more for me to call, so I'm going to toss in the chips as well. So we're going to go to a flop, three weight with one all in. Flop comes 10-7-10. It's probably one of the better boards I can ask for. Not a whole lot of 10s can fit, hit his range here. And when he checks to me, I absolutely know I am ahead. Uh, I think he's definitely going to bet out with any pair, even if he has 9s or 8s or something like that. So thinking I'm good here, I decide to jam. I jam because the early person player actually didn't have me covered. I'm an idiot. Um, he only had about $130 effective, so that really makes my pocket 5s call a whole lot worse preflop. Um, yeah, this is bad. I'm going over a hand like la from last week. So that's tough. Um, <laughs> trying to justify stuff that just aren't even true. That's when you know you're playing kind of bad. But um, yeah, I jam $130 effective 
and he folds. So we're feeling pretty good about this spot. Um, the run out comes a six on the t as a turn and the river is another 10. So we end up boating up tens to fives. I show feeling pretty confident and the uh, small blind player actually shows kings and he takes it down. A little bit of a slow roll because he just, he actually, he just totally slow rolled me, but whatever. Um, he takes it down with kings and we are not going to win that pot. Next hand after that, we have 10-9 off suit in late position, my favorite hand for sure. And uh, we're definitely gonna play it here in late position. It's a seven way limped pot. So pretty friendly, seven weighed, multi way. Let's go to a flop in position, kind of. Flop comes 10, nine, three, two spades. So we flop top two. Action checks all the way around to me. I throw out a bet of $10. Uh, looking back on it, kind of stupid. Really, really small. I probably can lead out for like $15 or $20 more, closer to a pot size bet instead of a half pot bet. Regardless, I was played 10 bucks in the middle and the player to my left calls and the small blind now ends up raising to $30. Top two here, super strong, obviously. Uh, I think I'm just gonna flat this because he's a subscriber to the channel and uh, definitely has some idea and some familiarity as to how I play. So I'm just gonna call here in position, hopefully get the player to my left to call as well. But uh, he unfortunately folds, so we're going to go heads up to a turn, which is the four of diamonds, a complete brick, and he leads for $50 again. Um, they're running out of about $50 here. As this player in the small blind in a limped pot, he can literally have anything. He uh, prop possible hands like 10-3 or 9-3. Um, I just don't really put him on pocket threes ever, but even if he does have pocket threes, uh, we're probably just going just gonna to ship it <laughs> against him, unfortunately. But uh, here I still just call. I don't put in the raise just yet. Uh, it's very unlikely that he's on a draw. And even if he is, I, I'm not, I don't think a raise will accomplish too much here unless it's a combo draw. So I just flat keeping uh, my perceived range just as a whole. Probably just looking like a draw as well. The river is comes as a seven of clubs, so the board is a little more connected, but like I said, there's really no worry to this. And um, it's really great news when he checks to me. And I am now looking at my stack, looking at the size of the pot. He covers me by a fair amount, so I'm trying to figure out a bet that I can get called and get value from. I throw out a bet of all of it, um, $208 total. And we just ship it here. Um, I think I can get value a lot of the time. Just look like a complete bluff because this is definitely a bluff that I am capable of making a lot. And he goes into the tank for a long, long time before making the call. And we show our top two and we take it down. Not sure what he had here in this spot, but uh, shout out to you, Joe. It was nice playing with you. Unfortunately, that I, I got the best of you from this one, but uh, hopefully you ran it up at the end of the session. Next hand after that, we have nine seven of hearts in the big blind and there's an under the gun limper. The button raises it up to $15. He is a fairly big stack and he plays his hand very, very straight up. So uh, here in the big blind, 9-7, it was my OG favorite hand or second favorite hand, whatever. I, I don't, I can't justify playing 9-7, uh, 9-7 suited. But regardless, I call and the ungun player calls as well. So we're gonna go three ways to a flop of Jack 9-7 rainbow. So we flop bottom two, pretty nice flop. I check and I think a player leads here for $35. Um, thanks for leading, I guess. Uh, also, now the button raises it up to $110 and we're in, and we got a decision to make here. Um, bottom two, I am absolutely gonna go for it. I think I'm ahead of a lot of the button's ranges. Um, I'm really just behind Jax, obviously, and he has a bunch of over pairs to this board since he's opening to $15 here. So, uh, looking at his stack, looking at effective stack sizes, Under the Gun has about $80 behind, not a whole lot, insignificant amount, and the button has about 320 ish uh, behind as well. So, here, we, um, we're we gonna rip it in. We, we, we decide to just jam it all in and let's just see what happens. Um, it's about a $430 jam, something like that. And I'm very much okay with it. We flop bottom two, let's get some value. The unknown player snap folds and the button size and makes the call. The run out comes the king and a 10. He slams his cards down with pocket kings. And we lose that one to a two outer. Pretty dirty, pretty sick, really unfortunate. I was not very happy. 
some orbits go by, I don't know how long, but not too, too long, we run into this doozy of a hand. Uh, we have 10-9 of diamonds in the button here. There's two limpers to me, and I raise it up to $15 here in position with a suited connector. Love 10-9. And we get a middle position player who makes the call. This is the same player with pockets kings from last hand, so we know he can be a little sticky, and uh, yeah. So we're going to go to a flop, which comes King, Jack, Seven, two clubs out there. Flop a gutter ball, but not a whole lot else going for us here. When he checks to me, we're in position. I'm going to fire big. It's just trying to fold out the majority of his hands. Um, I bet $25. He thinks for quite some time, actually, and uh, he decides to still make the call. And we're going to go to a turn, which is another Jack. It's... I don't really know. I really wanted to win this one, so I really just was like, I'm going to just continually put pressure and barrel. Um, so he checks to me, and I bet $60. Once again, he thinks for a very long time. It seems like he's nutted or nothing here in this spot because um, he's just, just for how long he's thinking. Maybe he's thinking of raising. Maybe he's thinking of folding. I didn't have a good read on him, but I was hoping that he was trying to fold. Um, but anyways, after thinking for a few, like like a minute or so, he ends up making the call. And we go to a river, which is a complete brick. It's a four. And uh, he leads for $100 here in this spot. I have 10 high. What What is happening? I have 10 high, and I can't call. Um, and I should fold. But I look at my stack, and I ended up jamming $315, trying to bluff him off this hand. I think he calls with only his nutted hands, and that's about it. Um, realistically, 1-3, a little suicidal once he leads out for so much. It seems like he's got definitely, definitely, definitely got a pretty strong hand going for value here, but I think a lot of kings are going to have to fold, and I think you have to, it's a crying call with a jack too. But he snap calls because we ran into king jack offsuit with the boat. So that was a huge punt, and I am not proud to uh, to throw that hand out there for you guys, but I am forced to, because this vlog is all about transparency, honesty, all that stupid shit, so that sucked to uh, kind of go over, but that was the hand I had, and that was the massive punt that I, that I kind of pulled off there. It's not a move that I'm proud of. I think I think it works if he checked to me. If he checked to me and I throw in a bet of like 250, then I think it's a lot better, but it's just so clear now looking back on it. I just have to learn these stupid mistakes that a 1-3 player leading out or calling down the flop and turn bets and leading out in the river out of position, he's very strong. Now I know. I should have known this the whole time, but now I know. Anyways, I didn't end up recording an outro because uh, I'll show the, the bloopers. Um, I tried to, and it was kind of a shit show. I was obviously not in a good mood um, because it's, it's September's kind of kicking my ass. But yeah, anyways, um, that's all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed the hands. Um, hopefully you get some entertainment about l listening to me punt off some money. And uh, end of the video, you'll see the results. Not proud of them, but those are the results. So um, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. Like I said, click the link in the description below. Some merch, some cool stuff. I promise I don't always punt off money just when I have pr things going on and playing stupid. But anyways, on to uh, the next video in the next two days. I'll see you guys then. Peace out, boys. Uh, I've never, like... Uh, uh. Alright, this car can just shut up. Oh my goodness, horrible audio.